just going to do a quick tutorial on uh, how you can create a form to collect, for example, student emails or if you want to survey your kids on some information or something like that using uh, Google Forms, which is a, a sub program inside Google Docs. In order to do that, first of all, you need to create a Google Docs account. Uh, Google the word Google space Docs and either log in or create an account. And then on the main page, on the top left, it'll say create new and choose create new spreadsheet. You could also choose create new form, but I find it easier to create a form from within a spreadsheet because I can see a little bit more of what's going on. I've already done that. I've gone file, create. I've gone create new spreadsheet. It took me to this page here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle, click on create a form. So form, create a form right there. And it's going to take me to a separate little window. This is a form. Anytime you open a form, it automatically includes two sample questions. Uh, sometimes those are annoying. Sometimes they're fine. If I want to edit a question, I click on the pencil. If I want to duplicate a question, I click that. And if I want to delete a question, I click on that there. Uh, I'll give the form a title. So this would be uh, emails or student emails. And I would write instructions. Please carefully enter your email address. Um, again, you could use this if you want to do a survey about a novel or if you're just trying to collect some data to start a discussion. Uh, the sky's the limit. Google Forms is a very, very powerful tool, and it's, it's free. Uh, where it says question title, this is going to be the title of the question. So I would type, for example, please enter your, and I'll probably capitalize it so it stands out, first name. Help text, I would go uh, IE Roberto. Question type, you can choose various question types. So text gives them one line to enter text. Paragraph allows them to enter a paragraph. Multiple choice allows you to supply them with answers that they pick from. Uh, check boxes and choose from list as well. Scale is very nice if you want to have a sliding scale from say 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 and you can have them uh, rank things. You know, What did you think of the plot of this novel? Uh, give it an 8. What did you think of the character development of this novel? Or I even did a year-end survey with my students to find out how they liked some of the teaching things that I had done and I got some really good data that way. But I'll leave this as text for now. And I'll make this a required question so they have to answer it before they hit submit. Sample question number two, I want to edit that one. Remember Google Forms automatically gives you two samples, two questions as part of it. So sample question number two, please enter your last name, i.e. Luongo, my apologies to Roberto Luongo for using his first and last name without his permission, but I'm sure he'd be okay with it, I hope. I'll make this a, retired, a required question as well. That gives me the first name, gives me the last name, now I need their email address. So I'm going to go uh, add item, here are the various questions, I'll choose text, and that'll give me a new text question. Or if I wanted to, because I want another text question, I can just hit duplicate, and that gives me a brand new question. Now it duplicated the Luongo question. I don't want that. I want it to be please carefully enter your email address i.e. who I am at myservice.com sure. Make this the required question. Uh, oh, you know what? I'd like parent email addresses as well. So I'm going to go duplicate. Please carefully enter your parents' email address. Who they are at theirservice.com. Now, some of the kids won't know their parents' email address. So I won't make this a required question, which means they can hit submit without having to fill in that form. Although I did make it a required question this year, and the kids just figured out to type in don't know or none. It's up to you. Why is this so nice? Well, if I click on more actions right now, oh, 
sorry, if I, I can view the pu uh, published form here, if I click on this blue link at the bottom, this is what the kids will see. Oh, it's going to save it for me automatically. And this is the link that I'm going to send to the kids. Now, if the students, when they receive this link, type something in, uh, enter your first name, Elvis. Uh, don't want to fill this form out. Sorry, that's my computer asking me something. Uh, enter your last name, Presley. Enter your email, Graceland at memphis.com. Enter your parents' email. I'm going to leave that one blank, and if I hit submit, that has just been added to a spreadsheet. Where does that spreadsheet appear? Well, now if I click right here, now you'll notice I have two windows open. This window down here is the form that I've been editing. As soon as I created that form and started creating questions, Google modified my spreadsheet. It put the title of each question as the title of each spreadsheet. And you can see when I hit submit, it adds a timestamp. There's the information that I type. There's the information that I type. There's the information that I type. So as your students fill in the information, your spreadsheet will just slowly fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up. And at the end, once you've got all the information, you can go file and download it as an Excel spreadsheet or whatever if you want to do something with it. So it's a great way to collect students' information. The problem is students' email information. The, the tricky part is how the heck do I give them this spreadsheet? Well, one way to email out this form would be to email this form. You don't know the students' email addresses, so that doesn't do you very good, very much good. Once you have their email addresses, though, this is a great way to solicit to solicit feedback for your classroom. And the kids are really good about filling these out. They kind of like the fact that their teacher is asking them to fill out an online form. And once you have the data, it's in a you know it's in a usable data. You can modify it, put it in a spreadsheet, graph it, analyze it, or whatever. Um, more at, by the way, you can also choose a, a theme. So I might go with, uh, oh heck, I'll choose a time theme and hit apply. Looks like that. Um, I can also choose, uh, if you have a web page and you click on here, this will give you the embed code so that you can paste it into your uh, web page. Uh, edit confirmation lets me change what they see at the end. So instead of thanks, your responses will appear in my spreadsheet. I might say thanks. I appreciate the information you gave me and I'm looking forward to this year period uh, I don't let the kids everyone see the response summary because I'm worried that kids might see confidential data from each other so we're just gonna hit save back to my problem my problem is until I have their email addresses, it's tough for me to email out a form. But at the very bottom, this blue link, this long thing, if you carefully highlight it with your mouse and then either right-click or Control-C, copy, that's the link that you can now add into your own blog or web page. So you have to have your own web page either through the school or your own blog. And if you don't have that, that you'll have to talk to someone who's techie at your school and they can help you set up a web page. But then... On that web page, you would say, click here to enter your email addresses, highlight the click here to enter your email addresses, and attach this blue link to that section of the web page. Hopefully that makes sense. If you're not sure, you can uh, email me for more information. But that's how you can make a Google form to collect uh, students' information, email information. Uh, if you ever want to collect data, say for if you're in a math class and you're doing a year on statistics, you could collect, for example, their heights, their shoe sizes, uh, what type of music they listen to. You can make that a multiple choice one. You could look at data like that. Uh, how long they spend online. You can give them a sliding scale for all sorts of stuff. And then you'd have data that the students could use from their own class and interpret that in a statistics uh, section. Uh, in social studies, if you're looking at how so, uh, societies break down, you could do mock elections this way before the election and see how your class would have voted. And you can do it anonymously. You don't have to have them fill in their own name. Um, or you can do it uh, and, and have them attach the name just if you feel that will give you more honest results. Lots of neat stuff you can do here. So that's how you make a Google form.